Hello and welcome. So we've seen already that systems can have no solutions and we've seen how that pops up when we perform the Gaussian elimination. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. So here we have a two-dimensional system. We'll also look at a three-dimensional one. 2x plus 3y equals 10, 4x plus 6y equals 5. We see that we have two lines that are parallel. In fact, if you see that we double uh, the, the coefficients for x and y in the second equation or simply double that of the coefficients in the first equation. However, if you double 10, you, you don't get 5. So in essence, these lines are going to have the same slope, but they're going to have different vertical intercepts. If I set this up in matrix form and I perform Gaussian elimination, 2, 3, 10, 4, 6, 5, and all I really need to do here is one operation. In fact, if I take negative 2 times the first row and add it to the second row, put that result into row 2, then you'll see that what we end up with is 2, 3, 10 for the first equation. Negative 2 times 2 plus 4 is 0. Negative 2 times 3 plus 6 is 0. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. At this point, we're anticipating a problem. We see that for the coefficients of x and y in the second equation, we have 0x plus 0y equals negative 15. And this suggests, once again, that 0 is equal to negative 15, which is a big false statement. When we're conducting elimination or we're conducting re this, this reduction using Gaussian elimination, and we come up with any row in which all the coefficients disappear, but we're left with some non-zero constant, we know we're going to have infinitely many, uh, excuse me, no solutions. So this system has no solutions. In three dimensions, we've seen that if we have, for example, two parallel planes and a third one that, that's even coming in there and intersecting those two planes, we see that there is no common intersection between the, the first two planes, which are actually these guys here. Uh, the second equation is just a multiple of the first equation. But if we do this in reduced row echelon, or in, excuse me, using Gaussian elimination, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 6, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. And we begin our elimination process. Specifically, I'll go ahead and take, let's see, we're going to take negative 2 times row 1. We're going to add it to row 2 and record the results in row 2. So what that's going to look like, if I scale the first row by negative 2 and add it to the second one, leaving the first row exactly the same, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, uh, negative one, 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0, negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0, negative 2 times 1 plus 2 is 0, and negative 2 times 2 plus 6 is positive 2. And the third row stays the same because we didn't perform any row operations on that. And once again, in this third row, so, excuse me, second row right here, I see a problem. This is telling me that 0x plus 0y plus 0z has to equal 2, which is telling me that 0 has to equal 2. So the only circumstance under which you're going to find a solution to this system is if, in fact, 0 were equal to 2, which is crazy. We know that that's not the case. So we can say that this system has no solutions. So the no solutions case is really pretty quick to detect whenever you get a row that eliminates all zeros for the coefficients but where the, uh, where the constant ends up being a non-zero value.